You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Oh, no. Not now. What's wrong, boss? This old typewriter. I think it's got a broken key. It's not broken, only jammed. There. All better. Thanks. Think nothing of it. I'll be here all night trying to get this editorial written. Oh, come on. Things aren't that bad. Don't be such a gloom cookie. I am not now, nor have I ever been a gloom cookie. That's better. Now go back to work. I got the front page all laid out. Great, Andy. Uh, rest of the pages are almost done. Um, <clears throat> can I, uh, well, I I'd like to talk to you, Mr. Winter. Can't it wait? I can spare a few seconds. What's on your mind? <clears throat> well, the fact is... Something stuck in your throat? No, sir. Wait a minute. I've got some real medicine here. Come on. Take a swig. Mm. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Winter. Uh, I hate to tell you this, but... I'm resigning. You're, you're the best editor a man could work for. But it's eight weeks since I've been paid, and I... I, I know. I don't blame you. Well, I do. Andy Praskins, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Jackie... The best editor a man could work for, and you repay him by quitting? I told you, I hate to do it. Then why? Because of a little setback? It ain't a little setback, and you know it, Miss Benson. And so does Mr. Winter. This paper was finished the second the Gazette came to town. How are you going to buck a syndicate like that? They can spend a million dollars and still not feel it. They got a morning edition, a night edition. So I say, join them. You mean you're going to work for them? Starting tomorrow. And if you're smart... You! Just get out of here! Andy. Good luck. Thank you, sir. I still say, you're the best. That's gratitude for you. Jackie. Get mad. Do something. That was our linotype operator who just walked out. Honey, it won't do any good to get mad. Andy's right. We're finished. Don't tell me that, Doug. Please. It was your dream. Well, now I'm awake. Miss Benson, I'm afraid you're fired, too. We both are. What are you going to do? See you to the door. Will you be all right? Sure, it's not the end of the world. Just a damn bird courier. Take a look at tomorrow's headline. Mayor Stinson's daughter wins beauty contest. Pretty exciting, huh? Now look at the Gazette. Extra. Mayor and beauty contest fraud. Which one do you think's going to sell? Yeah? Might I trouble you for a match? For my cigar? Oh, sure. I, I think I have some. This is a beautiful, beautiful evening, isn't it? The bridge, the river. Ah, smell the pines in the air. A pity you have to leave it all. What do you mean? Well, you were about to commit suicide, weren't you? That's none of your business. <laughs> I agree. But a man ought to do a good job of it. I mean, to jump into the river from here could work. On the other hand... You might end up with nothing more than a head cold. I certainly wouldn't risk it. Oh, by the way, you find that match? No, I'm out. <sighs> no matter. Are you going to jump? Why? You want to watch? Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I was just thinking if you're not going to jump, maybe you wouldn't mind giving me a lift into town. Quite a psychologist, aren't you? One of the best, my boy. One of the best. Okay. Come on. How did you do that? Do what? I didn't see a match. You just snapped your fingers. <laughs> oh, that. Just a little magic trick. Shall we go? Why not? Get in. Thank you, young man. You will not regret this. I promise.
Take away a man's dream, fill him with whiskey and despair, and send him to a lonely bridge late at night. Let him stand there looking down at the black water and try to imagine the thoughts that come to mind. You can't. I can't. But there's someone who can, and he's seated next to Douglas Winter right now. Mr. Winter thinks his car is headed back to town, but he's wrong, because its real destination is the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Printer's Devil, starring Bobby Slayton, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Here we are, beautiful downtown Danburg. Why, thank you. I appreciate the ride. Sure. And thank you. Half Moon Bar and Grill. Uh, excuse me, young man. Yeah? I hope you're not going to drink alone. I was. Care to join me? I'd be delighted. Feeling better? Not yet. Hi, Mr. Winter. Hello, Molly. Let me have a cup of hemlock on the rocks. Cup of what? Make it a martini. The same for me, Molly. Could I see you for a second? What about? Well, um... The tab. Hmm? I'm sorry. Mr. Foster says he'll wait, but from now on it's got to be cash. Please, allow me. Oh, well, that'll be fine then. Now, Molly, you run and go get those drinks. And tell Mr. Foster to make them doubles. Would you do that for me? Of course, sir. Thanks. Nothing at all, my boy. She's a plush one, isn't she? <laughs> Full of fire. I wouldn't know. Mr... The name's Smith. Douglas Winner. Not the Douglas Winner. The newspaper editor? Ex-editor. Why ex? It's a long, sad story. You wouldn't be interested. Oh, but I would. You see, Mr. Winner, you were the reason I journeyed to Dansburg. <laughs> you must be a bill collector. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. I am, in fact, a newspaper man, and I was kind of hoping to secure a position here with the courier. I could have saved you a trip. The courier's dead, Mr. Smith. I, I don't understand. There isn't much to understand. The Bragg Syndicate decided to start a rival paper, the Gazette. Can't you just fight them? I thought so, at first, but they were big and rich, and I was little and poor. Your drinks, fellas. Keep the change, my dear, in payment for your lovely smile. Thank you, sir. Wow, she moves fast for a big one. <laughs> so what do you say, Mr. Winter? Do you suppose the Gazette could use a linotype operator? I'm afraid not, though they did just grab my best man. Probably give him something else to do. Not much call for hot lead typesetting anymore. Everyone switched over to computers. Well, it's very disappointing. That was my specialty, along with reporting. It was? In fact, if I may dispense with false modesty, I would have to count myself among the best in both fields. Perhaps the best. <sighs> I don't know what to say yet. Then I'll say it for you. You put me to work right away, and I think you can save the courier. How? Oh, I can't even pay my bar tab. Very simple. I will waive my salary until you're in the black. Then, of course, I would expect some compensation, you understand. I might never be in the black. Oh, uh -huh, yeah, but then you might. It's a chance you have to take. That's certainly better than what you have now. You sure you know how to operate a linotype? Mr. Winter, that's like asking Paganini if he knows how to play a fiddle. I can make that keyboard do things you would not believe. Show me. Oh, with pleasure. This little storefront is the Courier. And that office building over there with all the lights on, that's the Gazette. People buy a paper for its news, Mr. Winter, not its building. Except in Dansburg. Why? Because there isn't any news here. <laughs> there will be. Doug! Jackie, what are you doing here? I was worried. I've been calling your house since 8 o'clock and... I'd like you to meet Mr. Smith. Jackie Benson, my most valuable employee. Second most valuable, Mr. Winter. He says he's a linotype operator. You mean we're still in business? I don't know yet. Mr. Smith, let me see how long it takes you to set the lead story. Certainly. Here's the copy. The machine's in the next room. Who is he? I don't know. Hm. It's an old model. I listen to that baby hum. Would you be kind enough to hold my cigar for a moment? If you don't play Chopin's Polonaise, we're going to be disappointed. Oh, you won't be disappointed, I promise. This machine and I understand each other. Watch. Let's give it a spin, shall we? There. 
May I have my cigar back? What? Just put it right there in my mouth. Right, 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 right. We still have to make a few modifications here, but on the whole, yeah, this machine's in fine condition. Stiff, perhaps. Why'd you stop? I'm finished. That's impossible. See for yourself. Read the type. Mr. Smith, where did you say you worked? I didn't say. Is it important? Why would a man with your talent want to work for a hick paper like the Courier? Not talent, Mr. Winter. Genius. And you know, geniuses can be unpredictable. Call it a challenge. What about you, Miss Benson? You don't look impressed. No. I'm amazed. <laughs> oh, I amaze myself sometimes, too. But, but this, I must confess, this is not my true vocation. It isn't? Well, at heart, I'm a reporter. I've always been a reporter. You know, some people might have a green thumb. Well, you can say I have a green nose. Wherever there's news, this old nose smells it. I'm afraid it won't smell much in Danburg. Well, who can say? So, well, am I hired? You would be, if I had a paper. But there's no use kidding myself. It belongs to half a dozen banks and finance companies, all ready to collect. How much would you need to pay them off? A lot. Plus eight weeks of back wages to the staff, the delivery boys... And me? How much does it all come to? Roughly $22,861.23. Well, I think I can manage that amount. On a loan basis, you understand. Excuse us for a moment. Surely. What do you think? I don't know, Doug. What does he get out of it? What's his motive? Beats me. Well, then... Look, I'm going to give it a try. It's a chance to stay in business a while longer. And after all, what have I got to lose? Absolutely right. What have you got to lose? Here are the rest of the checks to sign. Gives you a funny feeling, doesn't it? Paid in full. Paid in full. <laughs> that old roost is the best thing that ever happened to us. Speak of the devil. Uh, hey, excuse the interruption. Uh, I was just wondering, how fast do you think you can actually get an edition on the streets? We're not due till tomorrow morning. I mean an extra edition. I don't know, a few hours? But it'd be a hassle. We'd have to set it, round up the guys. Would it be worth a hassle, Mr. Winter, if we could actually scoop the Gazette? Depends on the scoop. How's this? I ran off a of proof. I, I hope you don't mind. Uh, let's see. At 10.20 this morning, the first national bank at the corner of Elm and Hester Streets was robbed of $50,000 by a gang of... Let me see that. 10.20? It's only half an hour ago. I told you I had a nose for news. I'll have to check it out. You doubt my veracity? It's standard operating procedure, Mr. Smith. You should know that. First National Bank, this is Winter at the Courier. We have a report of a robbery and I... Huh? I see. Okay. Uh, th thank you. Doug? Let's get to work. Special edition, bank robbery, get your paper here. Oh, my good man, come over here. Let me show you how you're supposed to do that. Give me that paper. Daring Daylight Bank guys, big stick up, read all about it. Thug steal 50 grand. Extra, extra, get her right off the press. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have your money ready. Thank you. Get her first, right here in the courier. Read all about it in the courier. What a day. Don't you wish you could have seen Franklin's face? When did the Gazette finally come out? Not till 2.30. <laughs> well, the mood has certainly changed, hasn't it? Thanks to you. What have you got there? Oh, just a little story I thought you might be interested in. For tomorrow's edition. High school principal exposed as... bigamist? Mr. Harold J. Swanson, for 13 years principal of Danburg High School, confessed today that he is married to two women. The first Mrs. Swanson... It's not much, but it will sell papers. How did you get this? I keep telling you, I have a nose for news. I'll check it. Hello, yes, I'd like to speak... I don't think Miss Spencer trusts me very much. She's not used to this kind of pace. Well, you like it, don't you? Mr. Smith, there's nothing I like more. Love nest at high school. Read all about it. Who would have ever guessed? Why, that old goat. 
Here's the mail. All subscriptions. Honey, do you realize that in two weeks our circulation has doubled? Oh, and Mr. Franklin's here to see you. Here? Winter, I'm not a man to beat around the bush. You've had a few lucky breaks. It can't last, but I'm authorized to make you an offer. If you're smart, you'll take it. An offer on what, Mr. Franklin? Why, the courier. We buy it, you and your staff go to work for us. Well? Sorry, we're not for sale. You actually think you can fight us? We can try. This offer will remain open till 7 tonight. After that, Winter, I'd advise you to find another line of work. Oh, turn up the heat. I already have. Under the Gazette. Come on, let's have some lunch. How much do you think they give you? Well, if they're as worried as Franklin looks, a couple of hundred thousand, maybe more. Why? Honey, what's wrong? I'm not sure. I have a surprise for you. I don't think I can take another one. Oh, you can take this, Miss Benson. It happens to be the biggest scoop of all. I'm almost afraid to look. Let's see. Fire destroys Gazette building. What? Listen. I don't blame you for being upset, but that's no reason to make accusations. Accusations? Facts! You started that fire, Winter, and you're going to pay. I'll see to that. Mr. Franklin... I've heard of some low tricks in the newspaper game, but this is the lowest. Mr. Franklin, I did not start that fire. How many times do I have to tell you? I don't care how many times you tell me. You had your papers on the street an hour after it happened, and that spells just one thing. You knew. I'll explain the situation one last time. Our new man was passing by. He saw the smoke and ran back. And in an hour, he wrote the story, ran off 5,000 copies. Winter, what kind of idiot do you think I am? The loud kind, Mr. Franklin. It so happens I have eyewitnesses to my whereabouts every minute of the day. Oh, we'll see about that. Yes, Chief Brown. Hello? This is Lawrence Franklin. Have you checked out Winter's story yet? Yeah, well, they're lying. They're covering up for him. What about that new man? All right, all right. See that you do. Well? It may take time, Winter, but you'll pay for this. I don't think so, Mr. Franklin. I think your insurance company will pay for it. Who knows? They might even pay for the libel suit. What? The one I'm going to hit you with if you keep shooting your mouth off. Now. Get out of here. We got work to do. Doug? Yeah? How did we get on the street so fast? I don't know. Do you believe him? Who? Mr. Smith. Do you believe he just happened to be passing by? Oh, Jackie, I swear, you sound as bad as Franklin. Where are you going? To talk to Mr. Smith. Hello, boss. What can I do for you? Answer a question. Did you start the Gazette fire? I? You. I'm afraid I don't understand. Why not? It's clear enough. Did you start the Gazette fire? It was started by a faulty electrical system. You sure of that? Mr. Winter, I never write up any item I'm not sure about. It's a matter of ethics. The men say you never left this room. They're busy. You can't expect them to notice every little thing. Hmm. Well, I suppose not. And you can't expect me to get my work done with editors hanging over my shoulder, can you? Oh, by the way, Andy Praskin's call. The linotype operator I told you about? I think I'll hire him back and put you on full-time reporting. No, 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 no that, that won't work. That won't work. I, I, I've made certain modifications to the machine, and, and, and look, I just don't want anybody touching it. I'll mess it up. But you hire him back. Just give him another job. It's twice as much work for you. No, I don't mind. I've got this baby trained. Two specials. Anything else, folks? Not that I can think of, Molly. Well, just let me know. Doug, tell me about Mr. Smith. Exactly how did you meet him? I told you. I ran into him that night. Where? The end of Pine Trail, the bridge. What were you doing out there? I don't know. Hunting butterflies. You don't have to get defensive about it. Look, we met. I hired him. He put us back in business. What more do you want? Did you check his references? No, I didn't. Do you even know where he stays in town? Why are you so worried about him anyway? Because I smell trouble, that's why. Trouble? 
1,500 new subscriptions to sell out every day, and you call that trouble? Don't you want the curry to succeed? You know I do. Well, then stop griping. All my life I've dreamed of this, and I'm not going to let you spoil it. What's happening to you? Nothing! You've never yelled at me before. You've never acted like a nagging wife before. I'm not your wife, Doug. And I never will be at this rate. Well, that's okay by me. You can't stand that, can you? You can't stand a man once you know he can take care of himself. Once he's on his way to the top. Doug, please. I'm sorry. Tell Molly to start a new tab. Who are you? Ernie Pinzer. And you? Rich Miller. What are you doing here? Working the printing press. Who hired you? The old guy, Mr. Smith. Well, I hope you don't mind. We, we needed the extra help, and they needed jobs. They're gazette men. Mr. Smith? Yes? Read that to me. What? On the machine, what you're writing. Well, I, I'd hope to surprise you tomorrow. Surprise me now. Start with the lead. Okay, if you like. Local man wins $2 million. E.J. McLeod, for 16 years, clerk at the Danburg Water and Power Company, learned last night that his sweepstakes ticket was... That's enough. Information, give me the number of E.J. McLeod, please. Yes, yes, please, dial it through. Hello, uh, Mr. McLeod? This is the courier. I'm sorry to disturb you, but have you heard any news on your sweepstakes ticket yet? Ah, I see. No, 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 I haven't heard a thing either. I was just wondering. Thank you. Good night. Well, you made a mistake this time. McLeod doesn't know anything about it. I never said he knew. I said he won. What are you talking about? How can you win $2 million and not know it? By not bothering to check your mailbox for a telegram? Yeah, bluffing. You know what the odds are of winning those... Courier, winter here. Well... Congratulations. That was McLeod. You see? No. The telegram was delivered. He only just now read it. I swear, if you sent it, if you're stringing that man along... Mr. Winter, would you sit down, please? I think it's time we had a little chat. Maybe it is. I think the occasion calls for a touch of the creature, if I may say so. I'm all out. Oh, no, no, I think you're fine. You're mistaken. Open up the drawer. Huh. <sighs> Fifth of scotch. With my compliments. <laughs> now tell me, are you happy with the way things are going around here now? Of course I am. For the moment. Meaning what, sir? Meaning Franklin was right. We have been lucky. You can't expect that kind of luck to last. They'll rebuild the Gazette and we'll be right back where we started. Mr. Winter, what if I were to tell you that you could expect the luck to last? I'd say you're an optimist. Oh, I am that. But I'm also a man of my word. Isn't that true? You have been so far. Everything I promised you, I have delivered. So you have no reason to doubt me. What's all this leading up to, Mr. Smith? A simple proposition. I took the liberty of preparing this document here. I hereby guarantee, you understand? Guarantee that you will become the most successful newspaper editor in the world within five years. And that you will remain so for the rest of your natural life. If you will just affix your signature right here. I, Douglas Winter, agree to relinquish my immortal soul to the bearer upon my death in exchange for his service. <laughs> You're the devil? As a sophisticated, intelligent man, you know the devil doesn't exist. Yeah, that's true. And you also know that the world is full of rich, crazy old men who just do things for crazy reasons. <laughs> Why not just think of me that way? I do, Mr. Smith. Excellent. Use my pen. This is ridiculous. Of course it's ridiculous. You said it's ridiculous. I've agreed with you. And yet, look at you. You're still hesitating. You don't believe I'm the devil, do you? Certainly not. Then humor me, huh? After all, what good is a soul anyway? It's sort of like an appendix these days, if you know what I mean. Particularly if it doesn't exist in the first place. Just for the sake of argument. Why would you want it? Or you just say for the sake of argument. I might find a use for it. Let's say, oh, I don't know, I'm a connoisseur and yours is a choice soul. Like wine. A very good year, so to speak. Why not just take it? If you're the devil, you can do anything. Not quite. I am bound to certain rules, and I do have my limitations. You're nuts. I agree. Let's drink to that. 
Oh, oh, I forgot to add, by the way, that if you don't sign, which is okay, that your somewhat gloomy predictions of the Courier's future will almost certainly come true. Then, of course, I'd be forced to resign, and you know what? Let's not even consider the possibility, okay? After all, you, you don't want to go back to that bridge again, do you? No. Then humor an old man. It would mean a lot to me, okay? If you don't, <laughs> you'll be admitting fear and belief. And you're not afraid, are you? Not in the least. What then? <laughs> oh, boy, fancy that. Look at you. A grown-up man who believes in the devil. <laughs> oh, give me that stupid pen. Well done. Here. I hope that's the last I hear of this nonsense. I'm sure you do, Mr. Winter. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Okay, let's see. What shall it be tonight? Doug? Doug, wake up! What? It's 8.40 in the morning. Didn't you go home? I guess not. Must have been overtired. Overloaded, by the looks of that bottle. Have some coffee. Oh. Huh. Have you seen the paper? Yesterday? Today's. It's on the street. Seven teenagers perish in fiery crash. Tell me what's going on, Doug. These things, they can't just be happening. Stay here. Good morning, boss. What do you know about this? I only know what I read in the papers. Has it happened yet? Well, of course. How else could... You know what I mean. Let's see. Oh, yes, yes, yes. An hour and a half ago. Oh, so awful. Nice young people, wasted lives, so much to live for. But of course they've been drinking, you know. You caused it. Mr. Winter, I was here all night, and so were you. How could I have caused it? I don't know yet. Uh, about last night. That was just a gag, wasn't it? Well, it did have its amusing aspects. I mean, you're not... Not what? Nothing. May I go back to work now? Terribly sorry. Thank you. It's true. How did he know? It's his job to know. But the papers were on the street right after it happened. Who printed them? Who delivered them? Ask Mr. Smith. I'm asking you. Get off my back, will you? All right. If that's the way you want it. Oh, lovely dress you're wearing to Miss Benson. And that perfume. <sighs> what is it? Something new. It's called Hands Off. <laughs> That's good. Very good, Miss Benson. What do you want? A bit of fire for my cigar. Here are some matches. Keep them. Thank you. I do believe we're going to be great friends, my dear. <laughs> okay, now then. What? Let's see. Extra, extra. Read all about it. Mayor Stinson strangles his wife. Murder! Extra! Extra! Honeymooners drown in Lake Bundy. Read all about it. Extra! Honeymooners dead. Read all about it. Honeymooners drown in Lake Bundy. Extra! Extra! to fire him, Doug. You've paid back the loan. You don't owe him anything. I can't. Why? Just kick him out. Or do you want him around? It isn't a matter of... Then what? He's taken over. He's running the courier, not you. Him. Well, he isn't doing a bad job of it. We're selling out every edition. You're selling out more than that. A lot more. Goodbye, Doug. Hey, aren't you being a little hasty? Mind your own business. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is my business. I do have, one might say, a proprietary interest in everything connected with the Courier. Well, I'm not connected with the Courier anymore. I wish you would reconsider. The fact is, I've developed a special fondness for you. Get out of my way. Psst, a word in your ear. <gasps> Why have all the... You'll be sorry you did that. Not as sorry as you'll be if you ever say anything like that to me again. Where's Miss Benson going? 
Ah, oh, love's labor's lost, Mr. Winter. She left us. It's your fault. I have only done what you asked me to do. That's a lie. Oh, oh, really? You wanted success? You accepted my help of your own free will. And the only thing that makes a paper successful is news. I never said what kind of news. Then you did make those things happen. Every time you sat down at that linotype. You didn't tell me people would be hurt. Hey, you didn't ask. You must pay a price for success, Mr. Winter. Everybody must, okay? Of course, the price does vary. Come on, don't feel too bad, my boy. You're not the first editor I've helped out. I don't want your help. Get out. Sorry, we have a contract. And there's no way out of it. But there is one thing you could do. What? Pay up. But if you are the devil, you can't take my soul until I'm dead. That's right, I can't, can I? Wait, is that another story I smell? I think so. What are you writing? Oh, no. This is awful. At 11.30 tonight, Miss Jacqueline Benson, formerly of the Courier, suffered grave injuries from a head-on collision with another car on Bascom Road. Cancel it! I'm sorry. Then change it! No, I won't do that either. What is written here comes to pass. Look, I told you I made modifications, didn't I? So you see, I didn't lie. I don't make things happen, Mr. Winter. The machine does. But why Jackie? Look, I do have other clients and I've spent a great deal of time here, Mr. Winter. And I thought this just might be a nice way to wrap things up. Look, it doesn't say she died of her injuries. I mean, I could add a few lines, but that's entirely up to you. Will this help you to decide? What's that? It's a 45 caliber automatic, I believe it's called. I carry one with me just in case. If you should decide to, you know, conclude our contract and... I think you'll find this method a good deal surer than the bridge. A lot quicker, too. Give me that. That leaves three bullets in the clip, as I recall. Oh, or is it five? I fired right at you. How could I miss? You didn't. Then I'll use something else. Where are you going? To find a monkey wrench. And when I do, I'm going to throw it right in the middle of your plans. That's the spirit, my boy. Never give up. Okay, let's see. 10, 15. You have exactly one hour and 15 minutes. Jackie! Jackie! Hush! You want to wake everybody in the neighborhood? Where's Miss Benson? She ain't in. When did she leave? About 15 minutes ago. Did she say where she was going? That's no concern of mine. Miss Benson? Have you seen Doug? Well, isn't he at his desk? No. The truth is, Mr. Smith, I actually came here to talk to you. Oh, really? First... I want to apologize for slapping you. Second, I want to ask you to do something. And what might that be? I want to ask you to go away. You've done a great deal for the paper, but I love Doug. The way he's been acting since you got here, I hardly recognize him. Are you holding me responsible? Please, Mr. Smith, just go. I'll agree to anything you want. Well, 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 you can't expect me to make a decision like this on the spur of the moment. Hey, what do you say we take a little drive and talk about it in private? Why, hello, Mr. Winter. Is Jackie here? Miss Benson? Not since lunchtime. What's the matter? Can I get you something? Mr. Winter. You don't mind my driving, do you? Where are we going? Well, this ought to be a good spot. Why are we stopping here? Well, so we can talk. Then we have an agreement. We might. It depends. On what? On you, Miss Benson, and your powers of persuasion. Go on. Persuade me. I can't. What? It's that cigar. Okay. Well, let's take a walk. That is, if you would like to get acquainted. I do. Come on. Don't be afraid. Take a little walk into the woods. Jackie? Mr. Smith, it's 11.10 already. He said it happens at 11.30. What am I going to do? Well, there's always this. One bullet is all I need for myself. My hand doesn't shake too much. Wait. The linotype. Yes, that's it.
Ah, the smell of the pines. This is a lovely, lovely night. Downright romantic, wouldn't you say? Come on, why don't we sit down here? Come on, we'll talk. I can't. I just can't. Wait, 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 where are you going? Wait, wait, hey, where are you going? Come Ah, oh, there you are. Okay, Miss Benson, I'm a little out of breath here. But it is time to conclude our deal. No, 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 no need to get up. We'll sit next to you and... and, and whoa, 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 what's, what's happening? What, what's, what's happening here? What is... What? Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith? Where are you? Doug! Jackie, where is he? I don't know. He just disappeared. Doug, what is this all about? If you don't tell me, I will go out of my mind. If I do tell you, you'll think I'm already out of mind. What's this? Something I wrote. Read it. Mr. Smith, formerly of the Courier, resigned his position and left Danburg at 11.29 this evening. His contract with the publisher was declared null and void due to Mr. Winter's incomplete understanding of the term. What contract? I don't understand. Neither do I, honey. But he's gone. That's the important thing. Doug, you... I said, he's gone. But how do you know he won't be back? He's a funny guy. He doesn't go anywhere unless he's invited. Did you invite him here? In a way. And I'm going to spend the rest of my life making up for it. How? Well, the first thing we'll do is get rid of that old linotype machine. It's time we switched over to computers. Will you tell me what you're talking about? Maybe I will, someday. But for now, the half moon's still open. I'll tell him to cook up something special. How does an engagement dinner sound? Doug, are you all right? Never felt better in my life. Exit the Infernal Machine. And with it, his satanic majesty, Lucifer, Prince of Darkness, otherwise known as Asmodeus, Belial, Lucifer, Scratch, and sometimes Mr. Smith. He's gone, but not for good. That wouldn't be like him. He's gone for bad, and sooner or later he may be back with another invitation from the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. Hello, I'm Stacy Keach. I hope you're enjoying this edition of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. To learn more about this series, be sure to log on to our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. You'll find special discounts on our Twilight Zone audio collections, listings of our radio stations, links to other websites, and a photo gallery of our recording studio and some of our stars in action. Plus ways to contact us with questions or comments about the show. And for a limited time, when you log on to twilightzoneradio.com, you can send in for a free CD of the show. So be sure to visit us at twilightzoneradio.com. Printer's Devil, starring Bobby Slayton, with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Charles Beaumont. Heard in the cast were Mike Starr, Frenette Lebo, Doug James, Derek Purcell, Elizabeth Lido, Carl Amari, Roger Walski, and Vince Amari. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors, and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Jason Mallow for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>